I came to Fells Point because when I was a kid, living in Baltimore, I went to art appreciation classes at the Baltimore Museum every Saturday morning. One day they brought us down to Fells Point and they were telling us that these had been sea captains' houses. And I was very impressed by it and, and it stuck in my mind. So later, when I was working in New York and I got an opportunity to come back to Baltimore to work, I said, I'm going to go down to Fells Point and find one of those old sea captains' houses and fix it up. And I got down there and I found Lou Fisher was already in looking for houses down there. So we saw this house we liked very much. It was a fine looking house. We finally found the real estate office and oh, they said yes, it's for sale. And it turned out it was for sale at such a low price that we were sort of astounded. And so right away we, we put some money down and said, you know, we want it. And then they said it's all going to be destroyed for an expressway. Eisenhower had been in Pressed by the Autobahn system in Germany that Hitler had built. Mm -hmm. uh, he realized that, that if we had uh, either catastrophe or were still or was an invasion or something like that happening, uh, we did not have the road structure. Government and the population in general was very much in favor of the interstate. They didn't really care where they put it, they just wanted the interstate because it was 90% uh, federal and state funding and only 10% local and it meant a lot of jobs and a lot of uh, derelict property purchased uh, for this road. Urban renewal money was hard to get but 9010 money was easy to get and so that's what they did. They were going for the the big lump. It's gonna be an elevated ro road right where the aquarium is and then the three roads 83, 70 and 95 are gonna meet in the world's largest clover leaf where Pier 6 and the Marriott Waterfront are, and, and then head up, blasting through the Fells Point and Canton Waterfront, and, and up to New York. I heard the councilmen told their constituents, um, you're so lucky the city wants to buy your houses because you're living in a slum. When I thought of Europe and all the old places there that go way, way back, and here, here we are, with the few things we have, just destroying them all. So I thought, well, I'm just going to see what I can do. Well, everything that we tried to do was hard to do because um, the city, the state, and the federal government were all strongly behind this plan, and they really wanted it in a big way. And finally, uh, I had this person that got interested, and his name was Tom Ward. He was a, uh, the only member of the city council who voted against it. I guess without him, we couldn't have done it. So everybody got together in February of 67. About 20 people from Federal Hill and Fells Point got together at Lewes and we uh, formed the Preservation Society. I think the real thing that brought people down to Fells Point, and again was an idea uh, put forth by Lou Fisher, was the Fells Point Fun Festival. She started that immediately the idea of uh, showing people a good time but at the same time making them aware of Fells Point and that attracts over a half a million people now. The way actually we have been able to survive because we've had enough money to make our, our group work. And then uh, they also did the house tours which brought potential uh, home buyers down. Philadelphia had a strange situation. Philadelphia was a city with more 18th century houses than London. And when they, the politicians in Philadelphia, crooked from the mayor on down, they decided that they were going to get rid of all that old slummy waterfront, which was loaded with 18th century buildings, taverns, and whatnot. And once they did, people all over the country who knew about Philadelphia were crying halt. And so this government then came up with the National Register. And what its purpose was, it was to stop federal money from demolishing places like that area of Philadelphia. And Dr. Murtaugh, who was the, had been named keeper of the National Register, he came to Fells Point and explained to us how we get on the National Register and what it could do for us because you cannot spend any federal money
to destroy anything listed on the National Register. Uh, Bob was the architectural and historical genius who put all this information together. For the community to be appreciated in its historical context, it really took somebody like Bob Eaney, and Bob worked long and hard on that. We did manage to get on the National Register. <laughs> Ann Parrish, who worked for Agnew, she took the forms that we had filled out to Agnew, and uh, he sent them over to Dr. Garvey at the Department of Interior. And in three days, we were on the National Register, and the city of Baltimore went crazy. The contractors were furious with Agnew because he was so dumb, he had no idea what he had done. He didn't know that he had put us on the National Register for a community that's blocking his highway that he wanted to build. Then uh, Tom Ward said, we got to sue the federal government. <laughs> Not just the city, we're going to sue the federal government. So we needed a lawyer. And we went out and we searched all kinds of lawyers and, and Lou and Tom Ward finally got Norman Ramsey from Sims, Bone and Sims. He's a great historian himself. And he said that he would really like to do this because he said we got a good case and he said, I know you can win it. And he said uh, that uh, he would do it pro bono. And for 10 years they did all the paperwork on the road. All these activists were always butting heads. They were very vocal, very headstrong, a lot of very articulate people who knew sort of how to take on the establishment. And they said, you know what, you can fight City Hall and win. And they did. They stopped the road, they saved the neighborhood. They were an incredible force. And if you think about the things that really have changed the face of Baltimore as we know today, it, it, to me there's nothing more important than the road warrant.